<laughs> well, let's get this thing started, Luis. Thanks for being on, man. So for those of you who are joining us, this is going to be fun. Jeff and I are going to take some notes. I got my business partner and friend, Jeff Fitzer. He's, he's representing with a nice hat. Good job, Jeff. <laughs> I love your hat, bro. And we've got Luis Diaz here. Hey. He's our guest and he's with Podcast Domination. It's an agency and a consulting firm. And you guessed it, they help you with podcasts. And that's what we're going to talk about today. There's a three parts to this. It's start, scale, and monetize. And Jeff, do you have anything else to add to this? Or are we going to go to Luis? You know, as the primary podcast host of the Lab Code Agents podcast, I am curious. I will have questions if the audience doesn't. Uh, because I do believe, and I think for anybody listening to this, don't think that podcasting is just like, you know, something that is only for like th the massive names. I mean, it is such a great outlet to create content and enrich your own brain, enrich your own business selfishly. I tell Tristan this all the time. I was so happy when he asked me to host the podcast because <laughs> I get to interview a bunch of freaking brilliant, successful people. I'm lucky and you could do the same thing. So this is going to be a good one. Luis, welcome. Thanks. Appreciate it, Jeff. All right, dude. Well, Luis, we connected. We all connected through Sharon. So that was really cool <laughs> of him to, to bring you on board. And he said you yeah. were amazing at this. And you currently, you helped out Sharon with this whole process of his, of his uh, podcast, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was um, a long time in the making. He literally hit me up like the day after Christmas last year. And he's like texting me. He's like, dude. I'm going to do it <laughs> like, it's about time, man. Uh, I love that, dude. Uh, well, that, yeah. That's perfect because I think a lot of real estate agents and just people in general that are in some type of business are thinking, well, should I start a podcast? And if I do, how do I do this? Yeah. Right. So let's start with that. If they are thinking of starting a podcast, why is it important and how would they start it? It's a great, great question. Nowadays in in the world we live in with social media and the abilities we can do with live and everything else. I even tell people like, don't start a podcast. You should start a show and a show is going to live on. If you think of the Oprah Winfrey show that shows everywhere. So a podcast is one leg of the stool. Um, it's, it's really for me, a greater, the, like one piece of the greater marketing wheel. Um, so now when I think of podcasts, when I people say podcasts, I kind of think reframe it as to, as to show. And, and really what that it looks like is like that's a live doing like video, like viewing your interviews live if you can, doing them on Zoom video so that you have content to repurpose later. And then having a team or something or yourself just stripping that audio, obviously, and using that as a the podcast, the traditional podcast version. So um, so that's for me in, in the world we live in today and how people consume content, how people actually get get referrals or how people actually do business, you need to build that relationship. Podcasting or building a show is, is one of the best ways to do it. It's not going to make you rich quick. It's, it's going to be a slow relationship building tool that you're going to use to level up your brand and actually get your name out there and get into more conversations with people who are uh, maybe not in the market today for what you're selling or what you're, how you help them, but in the market two, three, six, 12 months down the road. Um, so for me, that's the tool, that's the game or the lens in which I look, look at it through. Um, I know Tristan, you had a second part to that question. So it was, was it how to get started? Yeah, that's it, buddy. How do you okay. get started? Cause a lot of people think it's really complicated. Yeah. Uh, but it could be super simple too. Yeah, right? oh, totally. It can totally like when I started, it was, I paid a $12 course on Udemy and <laughs> taught myself how to do it. Um, so it totally can be super, super simple. I mean, from a, from a very basic standpoint, like what you need is a laptop. You need a mic like this, which is like, I don't know, $97 now on, on Amazon. You need um, something to record with like zoom for most people. That's probably gonna be the most easiest, the easiest route. And then you need to get your podcast up onto all the platforms. And um, I've actually got some slides to share with, but we'll get into that later. Just to answer your question though, as a, at a very, very basic level that that's, the, like the main three things you need besides like a hosting account, which to store all of your content. Um, and, and I think even more so Tristan, the biggest part of that is even if you don't understand the technical side of it, you don't need to, I don't like my team does it all. Like I don't really understand the nits and gritty of it now anymore. Cause I've 
haven't been in the production side of it for years. Um, but at the most part, at the, the biggest part is having a message and a, a clear way of helping people with your podcasts. Um, that's the thing I think is the most important thing. You can nail that. You can figure out all the other stuff. It, all right. Um, can I ask you a follow-up question to that? Because I was going to ask this yeah. is, is, okay, so you gave the technical answer. You need a microphone, you need Zoom, whatever, right? Yeah, um, yeah. But as a real estate agent, I'm thinking to myself, I'm not Joe Rogan. Uh, right. what am I going to talk about? Like, how can I bring value or what's, what would you advise? So, so for me, and if for people that missed the beginning, I chose to do a podcast for two reasons to bring value to my real estate audience. I wanted to become the authority yeah. and two to meet people that I probably wouldn't have had the chance to meet otherwise. Cause when you ask Tristan Ahumada, this is a true story. It's one of the, one of the ways we met, uh, Sharon Srivata, another guy I met. And when I say, do you want to be on my podcast? They didn't even question, is your podcast worth a crap? They yeah. just heard, Ooh, it's a podcast. Cool. Yeah. I'd love to do it. And it gave me an opportunity to meet some really badass people. Right. What would you give a, what would advice would you give to a realtor that says, what do I make a podcast about? And then how do I get to guests? It's a great question. We've, we've got clients in the real estate space and they had the same question. So I love this. Um, so first of all, to your point, Jeff, it's about building authority. If you're in the San Diego space or if you're in the Chicago area or wherever you're at, you can launch a podcast. And one of our clients is doing this right now. He's launching a podcast. He's interviewing all the other brands and names in that space, building a name, a relationship with them, one, first of all, and then also tapping into their audiences as well. Um, so, so credibility, yes. Um, the, 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 the sheer fact that like, if you interview everybody in your space or you start to work with everyone in your space and get them on your podcast, they're going to know you. So next time they have someone in mind or they have someone who needs to buy a home or to buy or lease something in that space, they're going to go to you because you're just on top of their minds. So you create um, authority. You also create the ability to just be on top of mind for people. And and that's the biggest thing. Like we, we talk to a lot of real estate agents and they're one of the biggest things is like, we want to get more referrals. We want to get more referrals from other, maybe if I build a podcast to build, to get other agents from other out of state who don't know anyone in that space, but they can refer me their business if they have a client here, you know, in, in my space. So, so that's, that's kind of like the biggest things um, is, is building a podcast, a building relationship, B building the top of mind awareness with other people who probably know pe like people who, who are going to be buying real estate in the next six to 12 months, especially the market crashes. Like I'm not on top of things like you guys are probably with the, the real estate market. So I don't know, but I mean, I'm, I'm guessing if the real estate market goes down and crashes or like, there's gonna be a lot of people out there with money in their pocket, looking to buy homes um, who are been ready for this. So, you know, those are the big, for me, that's the biggest two things I tell them. Um, and then it, I think, Jeff, you had another part of that question that I didn't answer. So I want to go back and make sure I answer that question. What was it? Uh, well, I mean, I think the it was a general question. It was kind of a broad question. And, and I guess I want to, I'll add to it based on what you said, which is from yeah. a real estate agent perspective, like we all talk about t creating content, like on Facebook and using a group and creating uh, community content. Would you suggest, maybe, maybe I'll just get more direct with the question. Uh, would you suggest that maybe an agent says, I'm going to create a podcast, a show, I like yeah. how you did that, uh, about my micro community, and I'm going to interview uh, local business owners mm -hmm. and tell you about their business. Would you recommend that as a strategy for a quote unquote podcast? I would, I, I think it's played out a lot. So I think there has to be some creativity, some constructive constraints, um, or, or some specificity a little bit deeper than that. Um, for example, you could, you could say, we're going to interview other business owners who have done at least seven figures in one year. What, for example, like you kind of making a constructive constraint so that you're, you're going to bring in a specific type of audience. Um, or you're going to also make it a little bit more exclusive than just like, Hey, we just interview everybody. Cause that's definitely been done and it works well. It just now, now in 2020, like now in also 2021, it's going to be much more saturated and harder to do that and have success. Got it. Um, so it'll work from one standpoint of like, Hey, I'm going to get to know everybody, but the audience you'll see the audience growth you'll see in that podcast won't be as effective as it was say four or five years ago. Um, unless you already have an established audience. 
like if you guys went and did it, like you guys would probably do really well because you've got a list, you've got the Facebook group already. It's you've got to get these systems in place. But for someone starting out, I would say get a little bit more specific with how you're going to structure the criteria or get the, what's the criteria for interviewing people. Is it we're going to interview, you know, the top green businesses in the Phoenix area? We're going to interview the, um, the most, the, the, I guess the entrepreneurs from the Phoenix area who have, um, you know, I would say who have like done X amount in one year or something along those lines. So specificity within how you're interviewing people, just getting a little bit more detailed is going to work better nowadays than. So like very survive. niche, is that what you're saying? Yeah, very niche. Yeah, exactly. Or trying to get niches possible without making it hard to find people. Um, yeah, like for example, one of our clients is, is in Chicago. So, uh, and he specifically wanted to interview people to kind of segue into a new part of his business or to kind of reach a new audience of people. So for him, he's interviewing all the people like who are in, involved in the Chamber of Commerce because people in Chamber of Commerce are typically the movers and shakers and the people that are going to be doing more commercial real estate deals, right? So he's kind of like, he's focusing in on the audience who are not going to be doing, most likely going to be doing commercial deals instead of residential deals. So focusing on different people with, with different interests. Um, so yeah, when it comes to interviewing, I think I always like to look at it like, what's the goal of this interview and this podcast first and then reverse engineer. Okay. Well, in order to achieve that goal, who should I bring on? Like if it's commercial real estate for this example, who are the people in that space and that pot or in that area that would most likely be doing commercial real estate deals, um, that I want to get in front of, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. I'm curious. I want to ask him about message to the audience. And this is not, this is just, but whoever's listening, whether you're on Facebook or you're on zoom, uh, put in the chat, if you have a podcast or if you've hosted a podcast and what was the topic, I'm just curious to know. Yeah. Um, otherwise let, let's carry on. So, so we talked about, so Tristan asked the question, you know, how to get started. I asked the question about what the, the what, like, what do you do? Who, <laughs> what are you, you talking know, about? What yeah. do you mean? Yeah, exactly. Uh, what are the next steps to, you know, obviously getting a podcast off the ground. So we know what technical things they need. Now they have an idea of what they might want to do. Uh, where do they go from there and how do you, how do you scale it? Great, 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 great question. So um, a couple of things I like to do before launching a podcast. So if you've got an idea, you've got the equipment, what I like to do with people is say, okay, well, let's go and find some actual hard data about what your people actually want. So I want to go and say if I'm in like the, the Greensboro area and I'm launching a podcast, I would want to go into all the Greensboro related um, um, like city groups, the Facebook groups for like things going on in Greensboro and ask, hey, what would you want to learn about our city? What would you want to learn about the business owners here? What, you know, what things do you, want to, do you want to discover? That way I can, if I'm building a podcast specifically to real estate in a certain area, I would want to get some, some data on like what the people actually want to hear. Because the sad thing is like, if you build a podcast with only your intentions or my, or like your only your input, it's going to be really hard to get people to listen because you're only going on speculation. So one of the biggest things is doing a survey, doing some kind of outreach to finding people in your market who would be potential listeners and saying, Hey, like, what do you want to listen? What kind of podcast do you listen to already? What, when do you listen to podcasts? Um, what are some things that like, you'd love to ask me about the area, getting all that data. So now you can take that data. Say if you get like 20, 30, 40 people to take that, you have a list of things you can talk about. So you never have to worry about running out of content. You don't have to worry. Like they basically can write out your exact, your exact content calendar for the year, more or less. Um, so that's one of the next things I like to do when it comes to, before we launch a podcast, like let's get data on what the audience wants. And if you run it like you guys, if you run a Facebook group, you can do, you can look at the back end of your Facebook group and anybody, any other real estate agents who run Facebook groups, go to the back end, look at your analytics, look at like what days do get the most, res the best response, what days have the most engagement, what posts have been the most highly engaged ones. Can we create a podcast out of that? Go to your Instagram, look at the highest engaged posts, go to your competitions, Instagram, look at their highest engaged posts. So I like to gather all of this data on content that I know already works in the marketplace. Um, and then, and then kind of use that to build out my content calendar. That's for me, that's the next step before, 
before launching. Um, and then a, a, another piece to this, guys, is uh, I would be remiss if I didn't mention this. And that is like kind of the, the three big things that you need in podcasting to, and it's just like marketing, any other marketing, whether you're creating a product or, or a Facebook group, three big things you need um, to, to win in podcasting, especially. Number one, the title. So the title has to be stupid, dumb, and value-driven, meaning it needs to be like Greensboro um, Real Estate Secrets. Or, you know, I mean, as you spell out like who the avatar is plus what's the benefit to them. Really, really simple um, value-driven title. Luis, you said stupid, dumb, and? Stupid, dumb, and value-driven. Value-driven. Yeah. So it's like for me, I have some actual examples here. We can get some title I'll, I'll share my screen. I'll give you guys some title. Um, yeah, let's do it. I want to. Sh- I want to see some of this. Love it. All right, awesome. I'm gonna keep it. So, so in other words, don't try to use some, uh, you know, ninja verbiage that will people <laughs> will have no idea what it's actually about. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And these are some examples of like really successful podcasts. Um, and you'll probably under you'll probably know some of these. So. High converting title shortcuts. Number one, topic plus secrets. Gym launch secrets. Um, Greensboro real estate secrets. Uh, another one, topic for Amer- topic plus like the avatar. Real estate investing for 20 something year olds. Um, you've probably seen some of these, some other ones like this as well. I've got some examples. Oops. If I go back here, some examples, some really good ones. Afford anything. It's very uh, simple. I know, I know exactly what one. that's about. <laughs> yeah, I like um, that. Smart. This is another one like Pat Flynn, <clears throat> a bit older one. He, he, he's a bit of keyword stuffing here, but like smart passive income online business. Like I can pretty much guess what that's about. Mm-hmm. Another does one. Key, does, does keyword stuffing still work anymore? Does, no, aren't the I wouldn't. Smarter I wouldn't do it. I, I think he got he got lucky because he's so he's so such a good. Um, he's like a big name. Yeah. Um, coaching for leaders. This could be investing for you know, whoever. So some easy, easy ones. Another, another one is, uh, you get the first two here, but the, another one is play on words, hustle and flow. I don't know if you guys, uh, know of hustle and flow charts. It's another big podcast out there. Um, and then anything, how to, you know, how to buy a great home in San Diego. Like that's very simple benefit driven titles. You don't want to, you don't want to make it hard for them to, to know why they should click. Um, that's, that's one of the big things. Um, to answer your question, go deeper on that, Jeff. Um, title is the first part. The second part, as we mentioned, was artwork. So these are some examples of like really good artwork that pop um, and that will stick out in the marketplace. Some bad ones are things like this. <laughs> you don't want it to look like this. You've got a lot of like words cut off. You've got really weird fonts. You've got some colors that don't really shine or like catch your eyes if you're scrolling really fast through Apple podcasts. Jeff, ours didn't make the shit list. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I, wouldn't, I don't know if he would tell us if we did. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I should have, I should have took a look at it, and it before I came on here, <laughs> but that would have been, that would have been a great live breakdown. Well, let me, let me ask you, Luis, though, like, so we yeah. just recently changed ours. So I would say ours originally was pretty bland, but that was probably the intent. Okay. Uh, but since then, we've now changed it to where like every episode has its own artwork. So every episode is very specific to, and I guess this mm-hmm. is, you're talking about the very general. Exactly. One. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Like the one you're going to see inside of, inside of your phone that like is going to catch people's eyes. Got it. Um, whoops. I got it bounced out of here. Uh, but that's the second piece here. So title artwork, um, people like what I would say, if you spend more money, spend some good money on, on, on artwork, I'm not talking like thousands, I'm talking like, you know, two, three, $400 on artwork like that. Cause this is going to last and help you attract listeners long-term. Um, I've seen the effects of good artwork and bad artwork. And it's like, even if the content's the same, people just won't click because what you've shown them on the front end is not really selling them on the, on, on spending time with you. Do you have any, do you have any recommendations on where to go get good artwork if they're not an artist? Great question. So I've used my designer. I found off of five, no, sorry, off, excuse me, off of, um, uh, Upwork a few years ago. Um, he's a, still a freelancer. So if you guys need him, I can, I can connect you, but he does all of our artwork in house. Um, besides that, 
what I do is, is I do this a lot. I'll, if you're in a mastermind, if you're in a Facebook group that has a lot of other entrepreneurs and real estate agents, I ask for just a, a recommendation, like who has a really good designer. Um, I've been connected with people yeah. like the, the head of graphic design from nerd wallet. Um, you know, for like big companies, because that's what they're, they're doing on the side freelance jobs. Um, besides that, what's it called? Uh, 99 designs is another one. I've seen some really good artwork come from. Um, that's a little bit more pricier. That, that's going to be like four or 500 bucks, but that's another good place too. And this is stuff like I wouldn't cheap out on my artwork because it needs to be, it needs to grab people's attention. And now with millions of podcasts, um, that are here, it's going to be harder and harder as we go along. Uh, Tristan, true. completely off base. Tristan, did you notice the, the one artwork you had there from Wondery? Um, yeah. that's our, they're the ones who do that one podcast that we like, uh, business not, wars. Yeah, yeah, business wars. The next big idea is probably another amazing podcast. I, totally uh, off. I totally totally off base. I'm sorry there. <laughs> Pretty good. No, all good. All good. I kind of I kind of like that that graphic. It's simple mm -hmm. to the point, and it's got a cute little rocket. So, yeah, you know, it's it's talking about launching something, right? Like I can tell, yeah. if it's it's pretty straight to the point. Um, the other thing that last thing, so we got title artwork and then last thing is a hook. Like why are people going to stick around? Like the title and the artwork is going to get people in the door, but the hook and like, what's the value proposition for the podcast is what's going to get people to stick around. Um, and the simplest way to do this, if like a thought exercise or an, any kind of exercise for people, if you're looking around you're like, okay, well, I'm serving this market. I don't really know what I can talk about. Think about three things. Think about the person you want to reach, specifically that one person, mm -hmm. um, the problem that they have, and then the promise. Um, so that's really and truly what this, what the like this little statement will help you get clear on. Once you get clear on this, it makes making content a hell of a lot easier um, because you're you're certain on the part, the person, the problem, and then also the promise. Uh, and the little statement I have for this is. Um, this show is for like this show is for real estate entrepreneurs who want to figure out how to get leads organically off of Facebook. And this podcast is designed to help you to show you just exactly how to do that. Um, so like this is something you would say like in the first episode, something you have in your description, um, something you kind of constantly like refer back to in all of your episodes, but it's good to have it like on the onset so that you know like the direction of the podcast who we serve the problem they have and then what's the promise that you're going to get from the show um so at a high level like that's i know that's a long way to answer your question jeff that was that's kind of the things i look for before we launch a podcast and press publish these are the key things we got to have in place awesome and I, I don't want to get ahead here but that is one of my questions which is okay you know how to get it started. You know what you want to talk about. You know how to build. You know the 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 title yeah. and the artwork. Yeah. Uh, where the hell do I host it? How do I host it? What do I do? Right. Um, I use so I use Captivate. Captivate is like nineteen bucks a month. Um, this is like and they're the thing I like about them is they're constantly upgrading it, updating it. They're updating the software. They're making they're giving you better analytics. They're giving you better marketing tools. Um, so it's called Captivate.fm. And the cool thing about it too, guys, is that you can host an entire podcast network on there. So Tristan, if you wanted to make a podcast network for lab, lab code agents, you want to have, you have your own podcast, Jeff have his own podcast, someone else in your team has their own. You can basically, like I have five of my podcasts in there under one account. And, and the easy, the great thing about it is it's simple. You can, I can spin up a podcast tomorrow and launch it without costing me extra money. Um, I can literally create a 10 podcasts network through Captivate. So, like Wondery does. Like Wondery. Yeah, exactly. It could be the Lab Coat Agents Network. Um, and you can do this with other hosting platforms too. It just costs you more money and it's just a bit harder to log in and log out. Um, so, I like that ability with Captivate because it's really easy. I could spin up an idea tomorrow and brand it as the Podcast Domination Network and I can boom, create my own network like that. So Luis, how does this differ from something like Podbean? Or Podbean. Libsyn. Or Libsyn. Yeah. yeah. It's it's just, the thing is for me, it's the same hosting, but their capabilities, in my opinion, because I've used Libsyn for years um, until I found Captivate, are better. Um, the price is better. And then also the marketing, the marketing tools they give you are way better as well. Mm. Um, so it's the same thing. It's just a way better product. 
in my opinion. What do you mean by marketing tools? So they give you, they, so one of the things that you can do is like you can create collections. This is for example. So one of our clients, they have a podcast that has like, they've got, they talk about kids finance. They talk about like um, real estate. And they talk about uh, like personal finance. What we did for them is create three different collections of all of those podcasts. So all of those individual episodes, we have, a, we made a playlist for all the real estate ones, all the finance ones, and all the kids kids finance ones. Mm -hmm. And now we can put that on their different Facebook groups. We can put that on their email, on their marketing list or on their email list. And now people can listen if they want to just binge watch or listen to all of the ones about personal finance, they can do that. Um, so I can go into Captivate and create a brand new playlist off of specific episodes, just really, really simply. Um, another thing to do is they make it really easy to submit all the, all the platforms. Um, and then also they are much easier to work with when you want to involve like third party tracking, right? If I want to get really geeky with my analytics and figure out like how to find listeners, it's really easy for me to track and to add things into captivate to tell it to say, Hey, like, I want you to let me know when somebody clicks from Facebook and they listen to this episode. So the tracking abilities are way better as well. Um, That's cool. Yeah, it's, it's got some cool stuff with it too. And they're always updating. So I like that a lot. Um, they will be rolling out something where you can slot in dynamic ads. So for those of you guys who, if you're running a Black Friday promotion, you've got say 300 episodes. It doesn't make sense to just market and advertise on only those 300 episodes or only those four recent episodes, right? With this tool that they're going to roll out, <clears throat> they're, you're going to be able to market on all 300 of your podcasts. So you can have someone on your team go back and add a brand new ad to all of your old podcasts, which it's still in development right now, but once they roll this tool out, um, it's going to be really cool because it's going to help marketers a whole lot when it comes to using their entire podcast and not just the most recent episodes <clears throat> with this ad. Let me know Dude, if it went too far. No, 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 that's good. I have a question on this. Yeah. So let's say we, we create episodes. Does it, does it make it easier for us to run ads on Facebook as well? Does it help with that? Or, or do we still have to do that on the, on our own through the back end? No, you have to still do it on your own back end. Yeah. 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 It's got nothing. To, it's like an, it's a hosting platform. All right. There's a lot more capabilities. I thought they, they maybe made a shortcut there, which would be cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like, just click a button. I'm like, okay, I don't have to go to ads manager. Beautiful. Right. Which, which Luis kind of brings up a good point. And maybe I put the cart before the horse here, but for anybody wanting to start a podcast, you know, again, get microphone, get guest, get topic, record it. Yep. Um, but what about editing? What about intro outros? What about that sort of thing? Um, Still need them. Yeah. Yeah. Great question. So um, we'll start with the intro and outro. Nowadays, what I say, because I used to be a big fan of like having the kind of like the boilerplate intro, you know, every episode, it's the same thing. And that still works. Don't get me wrong. It still works. Nowadays, I'm finding that just looking at the stats, people just skip that stuff all day. So what I, nowadays, my recommendation is have, yeah, have that on for the first 30 episodes when you're a brand new podcast. Um, but then afterwards, once you start to like kind of get into a groove and you're four or five months in, then just go into a normal, normal like flow where you just say it originally every single time. That way people are not going to skip as much and they're going to actually listen to you. And yeah, yeah, now you have the ability to add some, some different stuff in there, add some ads in there, promote something really quick. Um, so intros. Yes. If, if we're talking intros, a couple of things you want to note, um, you want to make sure you talk about like who the show's for. What's the, like the deliver, what's like the promise of the show um, that, and also restate the name of the podcast. Cause you'd be surprised how many podcasts I listen to, but I can't tell you their dang name. Um, so you need to actually drill in there and drill in the name of the podcast. Like welcome to the podcast domination show. Mm -hmm. Um, this show is for marketers who want to learn how to blah, blah, blah. And then get into your, hmm. into your, into your I stuff. I, you know what? You just validated what I, what I do. So thank you because I, <laughs> I, I preach a hook. Um, but I always lead into the podcast with, this is the lab code, you know, welcome lab code nation. Welcome lab code agents podcast. Yeah. Uh, but then I, it's always an organic intro. Uh, yeah, specific to the guest, um, which I, it's just, I, I don't, I, yeah, I didn't know that that was the right thing to do. I just thought it was better than yeah, the yeah, it is. And the funny thing is too, cause like I did it, I did it as a normal boilerplate intro for a long time. Cause it was easier, 
But if you have the, if you are like getting used to it and you're starting to get more skilled on the mic and you're more comfortable then definitely just switch to a, a, a kind of like a baked in intro mm -hmm. um, about the outro you mentioned there. Yeah. Outro. Um, there's uh, how I was learned, how I taught it and I, how I learned it was like, Hey, if they listen to an entire episode, this is your time to shine. So they've listened all the way through. And now they're still on here. This is where you promote something. And this is where you can take one to three minutes to promote something. Um, because the people who are there are going to be your, more, your most loyal people. They've listened to 20, 30, 40 minutes of you and they're still sticking around. They're obviously something you can help them with. So this is where you want to give them kind of like the longer pitch, if you will, or the longer promotion of whatever it is you want to send them to. Maybe that's your email list, your Facebook group. Um, maybe that's a product at certain times of the year. Um, so the outro is like a couple of things for me. I do. Number one, I, I thank them for their time because I realized that they'd spend time with me. Um, and then number two, I say, Hey, the next best place for you to go and a, a trick here, and this may not get into advanced, but a trick here is like, I like to frame it in their best interests, not my best interest, their best interest. So like, Hey, thanks for your time. If you listen to this all the way through, then the next best step for you is to go to my free Facebook group where we have private trainings there for all of our Academy, all of our podcast domination family. So you're always framing things in their best interest. Not like, Hey, go check out my new masterclass. And I was like, no, if you like this episode and you want to dive deeper, then I encourage you to take the next step. And that is to go to X, Y, and Z. So um, a simple, simple, simple thing there is like framing all of their actions in, in their interest, not yours on the, on the podcast. What about, what about um, also uh, promoting past episodes? Like saying, if you like this one, you'll oh, also yeah. like episode number, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So numbering your podcasts is a great, is very important. Um, a trick to that is first of all, don't put it in the title, put it actually in the description. So if you go to Pat Flynn's podcast and now mine as well, you will see the description has like number 124 and I don't waste any of my space in the title because the title's prime real estate. Like I want to put keywords in there. Um, so we got, I have my team go in and change it to where it's all the numbers. So if that's the first thing, definitely number it. Um, and when it comes to numbering, yeah, like this is where it's kind of nice to have those collections from Captivate because we can just plop the link to the collection. If you like all of my podcast growth episodes and click the link below, it has all of them curated for you. Um, <clears throat> but whether you're doing this, like referencing podcast episodes back, um, definitely a good idea. I find the hardest thing to, the hardest thing is like remembering to do it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and actually knowing the numbers of which ones you want. Um, I don't know if I have it in this presentation, but I know I have a I have a, a spreadsheet of all of my podcasts um, and there's a, there's a Google doc I can send you guys as well to use. And uh, what it does, it just makes it easier. Yeah. Tristan said, yeah, thumbs up. Okay, cool. Send it. Um, it makes it easier to just grab links. And then like, if you're on a podcast episode, you can just look, look in that spreadsheet and say, okay, yeah, that was episode 124. We'll link that in the show notes. So yes, linking episodes really works. I know guys like Andy Vercella and, um, and your for Sella and also Pat Flynn and, and bigger names do that. Um, typically, I think what works is if you're, if you're going to do this, plan out the episode obviously before and then have that number like referenced in the notes that you have in front of you so that you can actually read it and, and it's accurate. Um, I don't know, Jeff, do you do that? Do you like when you plan your episodes, do you kind of have, have some links or things like planned in a paper? Yeah, well, in, in our show notes, you mean? Yeah, or yeah, or just like when you're on the episode, do you have like a Google Doc well, in front of you? No, actually, I I, I wouldn't learn from me. Um, <laughs> well, but but I, and I don't mean that. I I can actually say that from two sides. Like one is like knocking myself, but also kind of giving myself a compliment because I've just gotten good enough to where I've been able to go do some 10, 15 minutes of homework on my guest mm. and jot a couple of notes down. And I can, I've just become, I do enough of these that I can just quickly Reference. spout off a really good uh, intro. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I know enough to be dangerous, to be able to, to get it out of them. And, yeah. and I think, and this is, this is something I wanted to ask you and point out is that the, one of the biggest mistakes I see in interviewers, I see this, we, we, we did this even in, in, in lab code agents recently, where we, we talked to our moderators 
which is about being a good interviewer. And mm -hmm. don't forget that you're not the star of the show. You're the interviewer. Ask yeah. questions. Let the let the let the interviewee talk yeah. and just let you vomit because you're there to share stuff. And so um, it's something I, I really always am trying to work on. Like, don't over talk the guest. Don't even when you're talking about something that I might even know more than the guest, <laughs> I right. shut my mouth and just let them, you know, let them go because that's the whole point of it. And I think a lot of people in our industry make that mistake. You know, like you you became a big shot. Now you have a podcast shut up and ask questions, bring value. That's, yeah. I don't know what you think about that. Uh, yeah, that's a great, great point. Um, I find that's a, that's one big important thing. Another thing too, in interviewing is understanding how to lead the guest, Um, and, and, and always, cause guests are great at, sh at sharing stuff. Like I'm probably blabbing off a lot of stuff that people are, may find 1% of this valuable. And I'm well aware of that. Um, as an interviewee or interviewer, excuse me, um, the, the goal is always to think, I always think that this, like, okay, if I'm listening to this episode, what do I want to hear from this guy? Like, I'm literally thinking that when I'm actually interviewing somebody. So it pulls me out of myself and puts me into the, the listener's seat. So I'm not trying to just like, I'm not just trying to like have a conversation. I'm trying to get pull out information yeah. out of this guy or gal so that my audience likes it. Um, so being like, to your point, letting them talk. Yes. And then also putting yourself in the seat of like, what does my audience want to hear? If I'm like a real estate agent and I'm trying to, you know, just double what I'm doing, double the amount of revenue I'm doing right now, what do I want to hear from this person? Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's a simple question. Just a thought just to ask it constantly in front of your, while you're on the interview. Um, but that's a great point. Like it's, it's your, if it's an interview show, your job is to highlight the guest and make them look amazing. So that on the back end, hopefully they share your podcast and then that's a one, another way to grow it. We've got to make them look like a badass. It's a good point. It, but, but like you said, when you're coming up with topics or you're coming up with ideas, put yourself in the shoes of your audience. What do they want? The same thing, stay, the same thing applies to when you're interviewing them. Yeah. Ask questions, even though you might know the answer, right. put, your, put yourself in the seat of the person driving down the highway, sitting in traffic, listening to this. I, and I do that. Like I'll, I'll think to myself, because I listen to podcasts and sometimes I'll be listening, thinking to myself, yelling in my own head, ask this question, ask this question. I want to know, you know? <laughs> and so it's right. like as an interviewer, cause that's kind of, I think who we're talking to here, yeah. uh, potential interviewers, like think about what you're and And, and I, I got a good, really actually a question for you about this. I try to keep it as simple as possible. Like I don't, I don't want to assume that my podcast audience is super advanced on whatever the yeah. topic is. So I try to keep it very basic. What do you yeah. think about that? I think it's really true. It's really good. And that's, this is one of the things I look at too, like knowing your market is an evolving practice. Like your market on the podcast is going to change. Meaning like when people DM you or they come in your Facebook group, it makes sense to ask them, Hey, have you heard of the podcast or what do you think about the podcast? Or like what episodes did you listen to? If people are coming to you and saying, I like the podcast, ask them, take the chance right there to ask them, like, what'd you think of it? Which episodes do you like? Cause like, even though it's like, you're not doing it from like a very analytical perspective of like, you got a spreadsheet and stuff, just having that running feedback loop in your head of like, I've heard a lot of people say they like this episode recently. So I'm gonna double down on that. Or I've heard nobody talk about this episode that I did and also look at the analytics and it sucked. So, um, yeah, like my audience changed changes and change and will continue to change. And, um, everyone's will because new people come in and, and some people leave. So keeping kind of a running pulse on who is listening based on the people who are like giving you feedback in your DMS or people who are messaging you about random stuff. Like <laughs> I'm always, I like to ask that question. You can even ask it on like onboarding surveys or client onboarding surveys or um, what else I've, I've seen it on like, even like email lists, like did you listen to the podcast? What did you think? Shoot me a message back on your favorite episode. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's yeah, that's a that's an ongoing practice, I think for sure. It's like it's like a double whammy. You're getting good feedback, but you're also kind of quasi promoting it in a, in a subtle way. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And going back to the launch piece to double dip there a little bit, like when you're doing that survey, part of it is also let them know that a podcast is coming. Like it's a little ninja marketing trick. Like, oh, guess what? A park podcast is coming, and I want you to, I want you to invest time in it. In it, so I want you to kind of feel bought in on the process. Because if you took a survey for me, you're gonna care a little bit more than if you didn't know I had a podcast coming out at all. 
But if you took 20 minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes to take a survey to answer questions about a podcast, you, you, you have invested into the process now. And now you're, you're actually aware of that the podcast is coming. So it's, um, it's part of the, it's, it's part of a marketing as well. Um, that survey. Love it, man. You yeah. just, I, I'm writing down a note to myself now to uh, about a post. I'm going to put in a lab code agent. So <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I love it. I love it. I know you had some questions on, on, on growing podcasts, but um, I don't want to rush there. So let me know where you want to go. Uh, I mean, if you have some slides you want to share, I mean, I do have some questions because obviously monetization is, is a big one. Like how yeah. the hell do you monitor or how do you monetize? But also you talked, you mentioned analytics, um, tracking the analytics. What do the analytics actually mean? Uh, yeah. what, you know, because downloads is the name of the game, right? But what does that even Not really mean? Thing. You right, tell me, right, you, right. you tell us. I mean, I think that's, yeah. But if I'm jumping ahead, then then get get us back on track and no, it, that's a good question. I don't have any uh, slides on on analytics, so I've got nothing to show. But I can I did a post the other day and we did some training on it. Actually, let me see if I have it. I don't think I have it in here. But um, do, 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 do. this is the the street I'll talk about. I'll send you later, Tristan. But um, analytics, let's talk about it. So there's a couple. There's only really a few you should track, and and honestly, they're not all of them are easy to track. For example, like sales coming from a podcast, very hard to track unless you have custom links. True. Um, email opt-ins coming from a podcast. Those are important things you want to track. But mm. unless you have like a way to track them, like I've got some clients who track them through like, uh, I think it's through active campaign. Um, but unless you're a pretty seasoned marketer uh, who has time to set that stuff up or you have a team to set it up, you know, it's going to be hard to track, but sales, emails, obviously big things to track. A couple other things, um, downloads per episode. And what we use is a metric. I, I call it the rolling, rolling average of downloads per episode. So basically every month you take the four last episodes, look at their downloads per episode and then divide it by four. So add them all up, divide by four. Over time, you'll see if your, if your average downloads are going to go up or down. Ah, oh, that's smart. I like so that. It's, yeah, it's, it's a rolling average so that you can kind of see over time what you're getting because the, the analytics like Lipson and all these other places, they won't give you that, that number. You have to kind of create it yourself. Um, we created a custom dashboard for clients that way it could kind of get a little bit more nitpicky on what we track. Hmm. Um, does Captivate does. do that? Does it, does it give you the average or no? Captivate won't give you the average. It'll give you the... It'll, it'll give you episode performance, which I like to see. Uh, so I can test and see, hey, which episode did better in the first 30 days? The one from like Ooh, last like month and the one from today or the one from like two months ago. And I can see the 30-day performance between both of them, which is really cool. And then Captivate also gives you listeners. Like it'll tell you the amount of actual people who are listening to your podcast, which I know Ooh. I know Lipson does not. Again, with the analytics is why I like them. I like <laughs> because I, like I, can't, I can't track other... I can't track that in most platforms, but um, Lipson will give you, or sorry, Captivate will give you like a number of like, here's how many actual humans are, are listening. I love um, that, dude. Which mm. is really cool. So right now with the weekly growth system that you've got, we're talking about, oh, yeah. right? Is this yes. on scaling note? Okay, cool. Yeah, so we're, so we're jumping into this a little bit. So scaling your podcast to thousands. Um, I, I wanted to make this super simple. Essentially, there's three cent, there's three systems, right? That you need. Um, and when I say system, basically a really good mentor taught me this, a system is who does what, when, and how. So who is doing what, when, what day at the time, what frequency, and then how are they doing it? What are the specific instructions? Nice. So when I say system, that's what I mean. Um, and there's three. So there's, there is, um, your weekly growth system. So Jeff, that's like, IE, like when a podcast goes out, what happens? Mm -hmm. What exactly happens? Where does it hit? What, what audiences does it touch? Mm -hmm. There's the monthly promo cycles, which is more about like what monthly things are we doing, which are things are like uh, giveaways or we're gifting somebody a course or we're picking one listener out of our audience and we're interviewing them. Um, that's like a more of a monthly thing or seasonal thing if you're doing seasonal episodes. And then the last one is, is, is more of a partnerships or promo. This is like a project almost. It's like, hey, I'm going to test Facebook ads this, this quarter. We're going to see how that goes. Or we're going to do a really hard push next quarter on podcast guesting. We're going to see how many podcasts we can get you guys on. 
um, or, or Pinterest ads, you, you pick it, right? But that's, those are the three systems that you want to be running in your podcast all, all times. And for some people like, Hey, you may just need to start out with one of these. Like my advice is to just start with the weekly stuff. Like just get a weekly system down to where you can just consistently do that. And it's not only on you, it's maybe a team member or a VA or somebody who's doing it for you. Um, any questions on there, Jeff? No, no, I think that's pretty uh, self-explanatory. And I mean, I don't know if you have any uh, very specific uh, actions uh, that your strategies that you would talk about, which I think this is where you were going with it right there. Which was Yeah, the yeah, we're going to go into this a little bit here. So you guys can see my screen still? Yeah. All right, awesome. So I'm going to wait for this. So this is going to cover the weekly stuff. So I'll give you guys some examples of weekly stuff here. This is a production tracker. So what this does is say, hey, from idea to publish what happens in the podcast episode. Dude, I love this. Yeah, this is actually not, I didn't even create this. This is one of my clients who created this because they're so like- <laughs> Analytical? Spreadsheet, yeah, yeah, yeah. This guy runs a multi-million dollar business. He's like, never knew to, pod- I just told him what I needed and then he built this and I'm like, Dude. I'm gonna steal this. <laughs> yeah, how sexy is that? Yeah, that's I, really I love awesome. it. I love it. Um, but what I want to focus on, so it's like, okay. We need to, we need to get that to Sandra and Tessa. Oh, yeah, cool. yeah. Yeah. You've got, so you've got like the link to all your stuff. You've got, Hey, so this is where like, you could put someone's name here. So I'd put like my assistant, Eloisa then Hey, so she comes in here when every podcast episode happens, posted a face, Instagram. Great. Email list. Boom. Did you email to the guests? Boom. Did you share it on stories? Boom. And you can add obviously however many you want in here. You can just, you can make this into a giant list and just have your assistant or team just go down the line every single week. Awesome. You can also do a flashback like, Hey, four weeks later, we're going to repo- re-promote the same exact episode. So go back and post in the Facebook group, post an e- flashback email. Um, we can create an infographic, get it created, post it on LinkedIn. So this is kind of like our weekly stuff that mm-hmm. we can actually create into make it a system. Do you and make it simple? Do you suggest on this that we do a podcast a week or would it be every other week? What do you normally suggest? I, I think now, honestly, to be competitive in podcasting, if if you don't have like, let's say like, like if you're John Lee Dumas, you can do it once a month and still be amazing. You can still get thousands and thousands of downloads like John Lee Dumas, but he's built an audience. So if you're starting off mm-hmm. with a smaller audience, more frequency is better. Like more episodes is going to be better. Got it. Um, weekly, I'd say once a week, once per week minimum is what you need to stay competitive. Okay. Um. If you're gonna do less than that, then what I would do is is amp up on the promotion side. Got so if it. you're gonna do two a week, two a month, excuse me, um, then I'd say you want to make sure your promotion is super heavy for those, so that even though you're producing less, you're gonna get more eyeballs on it because the promotion's there. Cool. Um, but yeah, once a week is is what I say what I'd stick to. Awesome. Uh- I love this sheet, dude. Great idea. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a lifesaver. You can put something like this in a sauna too, if you guys use a sauna, but, but if you want to like, just keep it like this, it, it, it works just as well. It's fantastic. Yeah. Um, I'd love for you to share that with us. That'd be awesome. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah you got it. Um, but share, with the ghost system, Luis, Luis yeah. share it with me, but don't share it with Jeff. Okay. <laughs> Figure it out in his own. I'm just, I'm just messing with Jeff. <laughs> um, I love it. Uh, so going back to your question, Jeff, about like tactical um, weekly growth system. So like, some ideas for like what happens on a weekly basis when we, whenever a podcast goes out, this could be emails, weekly emails, Facebook group posts, um, many chat. If you guys have a many chat list and you're not using that to get people on podcasts or get people, Hey, new episodes out, um, get that going. Um, IG stories, LinkedIn posts, banners to your website. Mm-hmm text blast. I had a guy, I don't even know who, I don't even know this guy was. He texted me about his podcast. I was like, who are you? <laughs> Somehow I got an email list or a text list for a podcast. And I was like, this is interesting, but yeah. Jeff, even text. We should do that. Dude. We have textedly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We don't even, we don't even use that part. You're right. You're yeah. right. So, so this is like, these are like weekly things that you could put on that checklist and say, and have a system for and put someone in charge of it and you can manage the process. Hmm. Um, so that's the weekly stuff. Uh, promo cycle. This is where it kind of gets fun because I literally just stole what all the smart people are doing. Um, 
but monthly promo cycles, this is stuff like giving away a free course, giving um, a listener a shout out once a month, giving away a shirt. Um, one of our clients did a $500 chair giveaway um, for moms. And that like blew up. That was awesome. That was for a launch, but you can still do it once a month um, with obviously a cheaper product. But this is like, uh, this is something to get your audience engaged and excited and also use them to promote your podcast. Um, I think I, one of the things I see people missing a little bit is like, we're, we're promoting, we're doing everything on our end, but we're not using our own audience to promote the show. So by incentivizing people to, Hey, go out and like promote, share it on Instagram, Jenna Kutcher. She just says, Hey, like tag me in Instagram. And you know, one of my team's going to pick someone from a, from Instagram who tags me with this podcast, uh, screenshot to win a free course. Hmm. Um, Omar Zenholm, he has like free ride Fridays where he gives away one free course. What one of these old, like his digital courses to somebody who left a review. So continually like builds up his credibility because people always want to win a $500 course. Of course. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and it, like, again, like this can be whatever for, for some people, it could be an audit call. It could be a, an Instagram audit or a, a Facebook audit, Facebook group audit, um, a t-shirt, a mug giveaways. Uh, there's a lot of ideas you can do. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do this more than like more than a month. Cause it gets a little too crazy. Like maybe you know, once a month maybe. we could do something. Jeff, I think. Yeah. We're, we're slacking on this. Let's give away. I, I was just thinking that's something we've never done actually. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. A lot of our growth has been hundred percent organic to be honest with you. I mean, we, we do a fair amount of promo, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is a great idea. Yeah. I'm thinking well, we could do like hats and, stuff giveaway like you know once mm -hmm. a month yeah yeah um what membership what to does. business video school Ooh. Yep. there you go I like it. <laughs> um and the cool thing about it too is as what omar does so he'll say hey like free ride friday we pick one person to to get the course oh by the way if you haven't checked out our courses go to blank 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 .com. so it's a it's an easy way to give away but also promote your stuff in a non-sleazy way so people actually know, hey, you actually sell courses or you sell, you have other digital assets and products that they can, they can um, buy. What a great um, idea, man. I love this. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 it's really easy to do implement Amy Porterfield, what she does. She'll say, Hey, go leave a review for the podcast and screenshot it and, and put it in my Facebook group. So you guys have a huge Facebook community. You could get people to like leave review, screenshot it. And then you pick one winner who shares it with the Facebook group community. Um, Cause I guarantee you, not everyone's listening who's on the, who's on the podcast or who's on the Facebook group is listening to the podcast, but they would, if you give them something for free um, or more than would. So this is the, the monthly promo cycles. Um, I mean, my encouragement, to everybody here is like, get creative. What can you give away? It doesn't have to be something that comes out of pocket. It doesn't have to be a course. <clears throat> it could be a free audit or a free shout out. People love hearing their names on podcasts, by the way, <laughs> too. <clears throat> All right. Um, last thing here we'll cover is, is paid and promo, um, paid and partnership promo systems. So I did a debt, excuse me, I'm choking on something. <clears throat> Again, pick one that works best for you. Um, for those who are like looking like a low budget, simple thing, simple thing to do. It could be like reaching out to podcasts and getting on more podcasts. That could be your pro your, your one thing you do from this system for the quarter of, for the fourth quarter of 2020 or the first quarter of 2021. It could be just making sure you're doing like five to 10 pitches a week. It could be going to um, events like PodMax. Like, I don't know if you guys know PodMax, but it's basically an event where you go and you get on three podcasts one day and you also get to like network and hang out with other people. That's awesome. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Um, it's ran by a friend of mine named Eric Cabral. And uh, they do a lot of stuff in the real estate space, real estate and finance space is got, where they get a lot of podcasters from. But like, it could be to get on one of that because like that will knock out three interviews for the, for the, in one day. You, you know, Luis, I have a question. Yeah. Do you ever, because I've seen it on Tim, with Tim Ferriss where he, he uses one of his episodes and it doesn't happen very often, but he uses yeah. one of his episodes to just play a whole episode of somebody else's podcast. And I, yes. I'm assuming that's probably like a hundred thousand or more <laughs> to do it for him. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but have you, do you, have you ever done that? Or is that something that. That's that a tough one. 
Yeah, that's a tough one to do. It's called a feed drop. I guess the official like slang term is called a feed drops. Oh. And it's basically when you're dropping an episode in someone's feed. And the, the, the goal is that usually it could be like a swap. Like what I would say is get creative and get outside of the box and say, find a YouTuber who has your audience mm -hmm. that doesn't have a podcast that would want to swap because now you're trading some really interesting real estate. So you, mm -hmm. they get on your podcast, but you get in front of their YouTube audience. Um, or it can be podcast as well, but there's, there's unlimited ways you can slice this. Um, so Jeff, yeah, what's that like a, tr what's like a trade? Yeah, like exactly. A trade. Yeah. Swap. Yeah. What's you can pay for it, but in real it. estate, he's got like 50,000 followers or not a lot. It's like a hundred thousand in YouTube. Um, Malcolm. No, it's not Malcolm. Is it Malcolm? There's Ken, there's Karen Carr. There's it might, Malcolm. It might we, be Malcolm. Yeah. You could totally do that, dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So a feed drop is just simply like, like what he does do a short intro that, Hey, want to introduce you to so-and-so can be a little bit of a different episode today, but I know you guys will like it and find value from it. Enjoy. And then you just roll this episode. Boom. You can charge for that. You can even, you know, you, you can do some interesting stuff with that. <laughs> Leveraging yeah. the digital assets that you have. Dude, mm. We could charge. We could charge for that. I didn't think about mm. that. I was going to mm -hmm. get more for free. Yeah. Yeah, there's some yeah. interesting stuff you can do for. Wait, well, Luis, let me ask you this: like, what is so when if somebody's judging themselves? Because this is a very hard thing to judge yourself on. Yeah. Um. What What is how should they judge themselves? Off downloads. Where Where do they judge themselves? And what? How do you grade yourself based on that number? Yeah. Um. When talk, where we're trying to figure out how much to charge. Yeah, or, or just in general, like, uh, how do yeah. I know if I'm being successful at this? Got it. Got it. So the biggest like industry standard is, is, is CPM. So cost per milli or cost per thousand downloads, basically like how many thousands of downloads do you get? Like I say, if you're doing like, well, I'll start with the charging one first and I'll back, back cycle into like, what else? Like who, how do you tell if you're successful with this? Right. Um, so in advertising and podcasts, they traditionally do what's called CPM cost per milli. So if your podcast gets 30,000 downloads, in the first 30 days at an episode release. So that's one episode getting 30,000 downloads. Mm -hmm. And you have a CPM of say a hundred bucks. So then it's 30 times hundred. I think it's 3,000 3, bucks you'd make for that episode. So that's how they charge per, per episode when they're sponsoring. Like if I were to sponsor you on a CPM model and you guys had 30,000 downloads for one episode, um, multiply 30 times, let's just say a flat rate of $100 per thousand episodes, per thousand downloads. That's how you could figure out like how much you would make, how much money you'd make, how much money I'd pay you. And who do we, Luis, who do we go to for that? Do you, do you broker that deal? I don't. Um, I've been asked to do that before. Um, I'm thinking of it actually, <laughs> it could be lucrative. Um, but yeah. I, I, there are some podcast brokers out there, some podcast like advertising people where you could go and find um sponsors like for you guys i would say go to a place like podcorn um podcorn? i had a form. podcorn yeah it's a advertising platform where it basically it's like a it's kind of like brands meet podcasters and you can put up an ad there and say hey like we got x amount of downloads um we're looking for we're, we're, we're looking for advertisers in these spaces um here's what we can give you i had a friend off topic he monetized three podcasts since COVID start. He started and monetized three of them. Um, I had him in my inner circle group recently to talk about how the heck he did it. And Podcorn was one of the early platforms he did, he used to monetize his, uh, his podcast simply by getting on there, finding brands who wanted to, to partner and then striking really interesting deals with them. Dude. So, yeah. Interesting. interesting. Yeah. 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 Really interesting stuff. That's interesting. That's really um, interesting. But yeah, to, to Jeff's point about, how do you tell if you're good, if you're good or not? Um, or how do you tell like if you're successful? So I would say if you're getting, if you're getting 5,000 downloads per episode, you, I'm going to give you a ballpark here. You're better than probably 90 to 95% of all the podcasts out there in the world. Jeff, you win. No, we're not that high. <laughs> um, 5,000 per, yeah, per, <laughs> per episode. That's uh, within the first 30 days. That's a good number. Um, Getting into like 10,000 downloads per episode within the first 30 days, um, you're probably like in the 95 to 97 percentile of like a of, of podcast in the world. Like very few get there. 
um, it's a very tough space, not tough space. I would say it's, it's a long, it's a longer game, but, um, like to give you context, like we've got clients that have done it, that they've gotten to like three, four, five downloads, 5,000 downloads in less than a year. However, they've had established audiences already, right? Like they've got big people already on there. Um, but I hope that answers your question, Jeff. Um, okay, but let's so you uh, real quick because we do need to wrap up. But yeah. you know, you you mentioned you know, so you're five thousand, ten thousand. It's top ninety five plus percent. Uh, let, let's talk reality. Let's talk. Let's talk hundreds. Yeah. Um, you know, what's what can someone do um, to get to that level? To get you know, start by you know, they're in the hundreds. They want to get to a thousand. They want to yeah. get to a thousand to five. Um, is it really just a combination of all the things we just talked about? It, it, it's definitely going back to the beginning of this training and saying, okay, Hey, like we've got to get these three big things, right? Hook title artwork. We've got to actually know who the heck we're talking to in terms of like the problem we're solving the promise we have to these people. And then also who exactly are they? Um, and then it comes down to this. It's like outside of like getting on big podcasts and using that to fill your brand or to fill like your, um, like your, your pipeline, of, or for listeners, um, it comes down to having a growth system for weekly stuff, like cover the basics. Um, number two, have some kind of promo cycle. So you have people, you're incentivizing your audience, do the sharing and growth for you. Um, and then back down to like the third one, like the more sexy stuff, it's getting on other podcasts. It's, um, like I, for example, like anybody here who started a podcast tomorrow could use either overcast ads to grow or podcast addicts ads to grow. Um, so there's ways to get in front of people, but I think it comes down to like nailing the messaging, kind of what we we're talking about in the, in the beginning of nailing the messaging first, then you can add the gasoline on the fire. But until you have that messaging in place of like, you're really solid on your title, your artwork, who it is you're solving problems for. Um, it's definitely harder to get there yeah. in terms of like, go ahead. I think we could do like a part two to this, man. <laughs> Dude. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. I didn't get I to the like, sexy stuff. The monetization. I feel, like I, <laughs> I feel like I didn't even ask the questions I wanted. I know Jeff's like the same thing as me. Are you yeah. open to like a part two to this? Yeah. 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 Cool. I've got a lot more stuff to share as well. Too. Got a lot more questions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. No, this is let's cool. This is fun. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's schedule it. I mean, we it. definitely got to wrap up. We try to keep these under an hour and we just went over an hour. Oh, we so, did? Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Luis, what, uh, where do people go to find you to? Um, great question. Um, the your, best help your expertise. I'm on Facebook, probably like most of the people on this call. Um, boom, boom, boom. Oh, I didn't put my Facebook link in there. But um, you can go to Facebook and type in Luis Ryan Diaz. That's probably the best way to find me. I've got... Um, I've got some bonuses for you guys as well. Let me put my, uh, I can definitely put my uh, link in the chat if anybody wants it. Yeah. But Lewis Ryan Diaz on Facebook um, or just podcastdomination.co. Don't go to .com. I don't know where that takes you. <laughs> um, but yeah, podcastdomination.co. And there's all the links there as well. Awesome. Um, for you guys to check out. I appreciate you, brother. Well, we're That's definitely going to do this again. So everybody who joined us today, thank you for being on. Sorry for uh, hijacking and asking so many questions. Maybe that was the point. Um, but I think there's a lot to learn. And that just goes to show you there's so much opportunity here with podcasting. Yeah, and, there's tons. Um, uh, we, I look forward to doing part two. We'll summarize part one and we'll just jam out and uh, yeah. try to hammer out the rest of the questions. And if we have to, we'll do three. What the hell? Hey, I'm not going anywhere, so. <laughs> right on, brother. Right on. Well, thanks for being on today, and we will see you on part two. I love it. Thanks, man. Yeah. Bye-bye.